much for having me. And uh, I have been uh, detained today, so uh, I've just been catching up on everything through the brochure, which is amazing and beautifully designed and gorgeous. Uh, and I basically just wanted to say that uh, I wholeheartedly support what Angie is doing. And um, I was thinking about this just because I have two kids and I, I mean, we sort of, we touch on sort of philosophical things. Uh, we had a discussion the other day, I've got a nine-year-old girl and a seven-year-old boy, and uh, the seven-year-old had been watching something on YouTube, and the trolley problem had come up, right? And I was sort of not equipped to deal, really, with this, as I am with hardly anything they ever talked to me about. Basically, my philosophical education was a tiny little bit when I was doing general studies at school. We did, uh, we tried to do Plato's Republic, and I was thinking about it, all that I could really remember was that Plato, the thing that always grabbed me was Plato, uh, I loved the fact that I discovered that Plato, they thought that his name had come from his wrestling coach. And I remember just loving the idea that Plato is his wrestling name. Yeah. And that he was like Dwayne the Rock Johnson uh, of his day. And also, the, you know, just remembering that a lot of it fundamentally was about the search for the ideal chair, which is something that as I enter middle age, I become ever more uh, sympathetic to. Uh, mostly I look for the ideal chair on websites where I'll never be able to afford it, even if I could find it, right? So um, I you know, haven't really got any sort of background in philosophy. The other thing I remember studying was Occam's razor. And again, having this sort of very complicated discussion about something that seemed to be about simplifying things. And it became this incredibly complicated thing. But I do remember the thing that I took away from learning about Occam's razor was that sometimes the simplest thing is the thing that is most likely to be true. And I know that's a very simplistic way of looking at it, but I think that that has been useful to me in life in that I've always thought if you're trying to think of an ex Oh, hello. Look at that. Woo! Oh, that's my... Now I've got to be funny. <laughs> exactly. Oh, God, now, bitches, you're all mine. There we are. That's great. Now a song. Um, <laughs> I am what I am. That's philosophical in its own way, isn't it? But uh, the, thing I, the thing I remember from Occam's Razor was this idea of, actually, if you're trying to come up with an excuse for something, then just use the simplest possible excuse you can, which I recalled that to mind uh, this week when I was thinking, if you're trying to make an excuse for something, probably best to use something simple rather than that you couldn't sweat because of something that happened to you in the Falklands War. <laughs> That's kind of why. That was my little topical <laughs> reference, guys. That's what I'm trying to do there. But, so, but uh, I was thinking about what I long for for my children, which is basically for them to have an understanding of philosophy. And we were talking about the trolley problem. And I was explaining, you know, my son was saying, well, it's all about should you kill these four people or should you kill the one person? And is it? And I was saying, you know, yeah, you have to think about is it better to sacrifice one life for the good of the many? Or, you know, and it, it was a brilliant and really interesting discussion. And the thing I loved most about it was then my daughter came in and asked what we were talking about and we explained it. And my daughter said, well, really, the fair thing would be just to kill everybody. <laughs> and I think maybe that's what's useful about philosophy in schools is that we can, we can use it to weed out the people who, like my daughter, are psychopaths. So that's... <laughs> Something obviously I do. I also think it'd be useful uh, to introduce philosophy in schools because I think the children would love it. Because for philosophy in schools, of course, the acronym is PISS, which I think they would <laughs> they would get a great deal out of. Um, but uh, finally, and this is a very I love the fact it's called an intervention as well. That's uh, when Angie said it was an intervention. I thought finally my drinking had caught up with me, but no, it's it's this. But. I, I don't have much to say. I'm not a, a, in any way an expert in philosophy, but I do think that, you know, with my own children alone, I know that they will be interested in answering questions like, does God exist? What are numbers? How do we lead a good life? Is it better to be clever or wise? Do animals dream of the future? And I know they want answers to all those questions because those are some of the questions they've asked me while I've been just trying to do a wee. <laughs> and I would very much like it if the school could take that over so that I can finally do a wee in peace. So, um, so thank you very much, Andy, for having me and good luck with all your endeavours. And uh, let's all raise a glass to philosophy in schools. Cheers. Cheers. Thank, thank you. you so thank you. <laughs>